If you live in a city, there's a pretty good chance you're living through a housing crisis. Rents in major cities are skyrocketing. And this is happening all around the world. At the same time housing has grown scarce, some buildings stand empty. Downtown Frankfurt looks like just about any other big city central business district. But the gleaming high rises do hide an alarming fact. Nearly 10% of the city's offices are vacant. Other major cities around the globe have vacancy rates that high or even higher. So why don't we just convert empty offices into housing for people worldwide? While many of us are back in the office, working from home is here to stay. For instance, 35% of US workers who can work from home still do, and plenty only come into the office on occasion. But vacant workspaces aren't a new problem. Long before the pandemic, aging offices were already becoming less desirable. Because there'd been for about the last 10 years a trend uh, that we called flight to quality. Stephen Painter, an architect at one of the world's biggest firms, focuses on adaptive reuse. People weren't renewing their leases in older buildings, they were going to the new ones that were being built because um, they offered the kind of amenities, the kind of locations people wanted. All these empty offices aren't just a waste of space, they mean less rent for owners, lower tax revenue for cities, and the decline of entire neighborhoods. We have beautiful buildings, we have the wonderful plazas, we have sort of all of the physical assets. We just have vacant buildings, and so you don't see that vibrancy. You used to, you know, kind of look down these key corridors and you would see just streams of people, you know, coming down the street, and you don't see that as much anymore. Lily Longley is a planner in San Francisco, another city addressing high vacancies. Almost 95% of our tax revenue comes from business tax from downtown. About 80% of our GDP came from from downtown companies in 2021. It is our economic engine, and so it needs to thrive so the city can thrive. Roughly one third of offices are vacant in San Francisco, the third most expensive housing market in the US. At the same time, the ongoing construction of new housing is causing a whole different host of problems. Construction accounts for 13% of global energy-related carbon emissions, more than five times that of the aviation industry. In order to meet climate targets, but also other sustainability targets, we will need to actually stick with what's already built. Pernilla Hagbe researches urban sustainability at Stockholm's Royal Institute of Technology. Even if this new production of housing and, and buildings is done with very energy efficient and, and optimized technologies, this won't be enough. We will also need to reduce the total amount of new production. And this is what brings us to Frankfurt. I checked out an ongoing conversion project. An office tower built in the 90s will soon be reborn as around 150 furnished apartments. Benjamin Albrecht, the developer's regional European head, is excited about adaptive reuse. The ecological factor lies on the hand that we had the Rohbau here already standing. And the Rohbau produces about 50% of the CO2 emissions over the entire bau phase, so a relatively large amount. But it doesn't only save on emissions. Revamping an office building can be up to 30% cheaper, and construction can be done in half the time. Though that depends on the project. This one wasn't much cheaper than a new build, but speed played a big part. Insofern der Zeitfaktor ist für mich wirklich der schlagende, dass wir relativ schnell mit dem Objekt auch ähm, Mieteinnahmen generieren können. Repurposing an old building to serve a new function is called adaptive reuse and can extend a structure's life. Think of turning old factories into artist lofts or warehouses into ubiquitous street food halls. There are plenty of empty offices, tons of people need housing. It seems like a pretty simple solution. Plus, it's environmentally friendly. So why isn't this constantly happening? Retrofitting an existing structure is a lot more complicated than planning everything from scratch. As developers have found out, apartments and offices aren't always a one-to-one -one fit. It depends on when and where they were built. Modern, open-plan offices weren't built for living in. First, you must divide up large areas while ensuring rooms get enough sunlight. 
and you can't just have one big bathroom for a whole floor. Each room needs ventilation, heating, and power too. And for all you know, the old building is full of asbestos. Not every challenge is clear before renovations start. Wir nennen es ja auch immer so schön Überraschungen. Ja. Also dementsprechend ähm, gibt es immer wieder Faktoren, die bei Flächenkonversionen dann eben den, äh, die Kosten wieder nach oben treiben. Ich muss sagen, hier bei diesem Projekt hatten wir eigentlich relativ viel Glück. Steven Painter, the adaptive reuse specialist, has even developed an algorithm to measure whether offices are good candidates to be reincarnated as housing. So it looks at so over 100 different aspects. And some of the key ones are things like the distance between the elevators and the windows. You want your one bedroom apartment to have a nice bedroom with a window and a nice living space with a window, uh, and then have you know, maybe the kitchen and the, the bathroom at the back. That's great. A lot of office buildings actually have way too much space between the elevators and the glazing to make that happen. This means to end up with shiny new apartments, many conversions essentially rebuild everything except existing foundations and facades. Turns out it's just slightly more complicated than just clearing out some cubicles and throwing up a bit of sheetrock, especially if you like luxury amenities like bathrooms in every apartment and windows in every bedroom. These constraints make many offices just too much work to convert. According to Painter's research, roughly 30% of offices are ideal candidates. And while not every office building is ripe for conversion, adding up all of those that would be a good fit would still make a massive difference. If you look at the US market where we're, we're doing a lot of this work, there's about 100 billion square feet of uh, office space. And if you convert just the vacancy or about 7%, uh, of that, you could create between six and seven million new homes. But just turning offices into apartments isn't going to be enough. Neighborhoods that are just office blocks can be a bit inhospitable. Crawling with finance bros by day, morphing into ghost towns outside of business hours, ensuring people live, not just work there, could change that. As we saw for ourselves. This neighborhood of Frankfurt Niederrad was developed as a sprawling set of offices in the 60s and 70s, given the wildly creative nickname of the Bürostadt, or Office City. But by the mid-2000s, nearly one in three of the offices were sitting empty. Es wäre interessant gewesen, wenn Sie vor zehn Jahren an einem Samstagnachmittag dahin gegangen wären, da wären Sie alleine gewesen. Die Infrastruktur war überflüssig, also die Straßenbahn zum Beispiel fuhr ja trotzdem, die war aber leer. In 2006, the city began converting the empty office towers into housing, creating true mixed-use development. Now it's filled with places to live, shop, eat, and go to school, instead of just places to work. Frankfurt rezoned the area and turned parking lots into green spaces and kindergartens. It brought in developers to build apartments and shops. When they're done, there'll be 6,000 apartments here. Dadurch, dass da mehr Leben ist, und mehr Geschäfte dort auch entstanden sind, man in der Mittagspause was einkaufen kann, sind die Büros auch wieder attraktiver. Das heißt, die vermieten sich besser. We took a tour of one of the converted office buildings. A 20-story tower turned into 150 apartments in 2020. Its former life made for some quirks. Every room has sprinklers and architects built around load-bearing beams. But they boast high ceilings and great views too. As you can see, many of these conversions end up as relatively upscale housing. That might take a bit of pressure off the housing market, but it's not going to bring relief to the masses. If we want this to be more than just some kind of luxury niche, we don't need anything crazy, just a bit of political will. The Canadian city of Calgary, which started working with Painter to revitalize its downtown in 2021, is a case in point. Calgary had about 38% vacancy in their office market. And that is, was, at the time, one of the worst in the world. They very quickly actually put a program together which gives you $75 a square foot to convert the building and moved all of the red tape out of the way to make these projects move more quickly. The first five projects are now under construction. It represents uh, about uh, 750 new homes. Then they have 10 more uh, approved. Painter says much of this housing will be affordable and built with families in mind, thanks to the financial incentives provided by the city. Adaptive reuse often has even more red tape than new builds that will have to change if we're going to use this potential to curb emissions. So if you take Toronto where I am as an example, there's a rule in all of downtown that you cannot remove office space. It's protected as employment lands. That was created in the 70s and it just never got updated because there was no need to change it. 
Well, now there's a desperate need to change it. It's, it's kind of holding up these projects happening. Such arbitrary regulations are quite common, and approval for conversions often takes as long as it would for a new build, even though the structure is already in place. Ideally, it'd be the other way around. It's both legislative and, and sort of from a governance perspective, uh, we need to think of how uh, how to actually make it difficult to, for example, tear down a building and build a new building through zoning and through harder legislation, but also through sort of soft legislation, can, taxation and, and financial incentives. Frankfurt's leading the way in Germany, converting offices to nearly 10,000 houses in the last decade. And according to recent studies, there's room for plenty more in cities all over the map. Frankfurt did it with careful city planning, like in Niederrad. Plus, the more we learn implementing such projects, the greater the savings. Since their first office conversion projects have gone well, Benjamin Albrecht thinks his firm will focus more on adaptive reuse. Many developers have shown interest in these projects, and cities like San Francisco are supporting office conversions. I don't think that we're naive in any way thinking that we're going to build, you know, hundreds of thousands of units downtown. Um, but I think it's, you know, part of the solution and is an amazing opportunity to take advantage of these existing assets. The kind of support offered may determine the type of housing we get. Flipping offices into housing is clearly no quick fix, and it's not going to solve the global housing crisis overnight. But Frankfurt and Calgary do show it can make cities vastly more livable, and it can drastically reduce the environmental impact of relying solely on new builds. Let us know in the comments if your city has started converting offices to housing. And don't forget to subscribe. We've got new videos for you every Friday.